Like, I'm into the music business now. And hopefully Puffy helped me out, you know. With Diddy on the hot spot at the moment, internet detectives have been busy doing their homework. And you already know that they rarely miss. And you'll never guess whose name came up. Mike Tyson. Turns out the two knew each other from way back. Have you had any experiences with Diddy? I know him before he was, um, Diddy. And now, it's been revealed that even athletes have been implicated in Diddy's crime. Mike Tyson spills the beans. Breaking news, the Department of Homeland Security has just confirmed to CNN that federal law enforcement agents have raided properties owned by musician and producer Sean Diddy Combs. The world was brought to a standstill after the feds raided Diddy's properties. Things were starting to get serious for the music mogul. All along, a large section of hip hop fans thought that the allegations against him by numerous women was a witch hunt because he had tried to sue the multi-billion dollar company Diageo. In the original lawsuit filed last May, Diddy claimed Diageo didn't follow through on investments into his alcohol brands and viewed them as inferior products that they only sold in urban locales. It alleged the brands did not receive the same resources as its other prominent celebrity spirits brands like George Clooney's Casamigos Tequila. Although Diddy and the company parted ways amicably in January this year, there has been speculation that the company had been trying to get back at Diddy for publicly humiliating them. But now, after the involvement of the feds and the Lil Rod lawsuit, let's just say that everyone is starting to think that Diddy may have been up to no good. We're back with new allegations of sexual harassment and assault against Sean Diddy Combs. Rodney Lil Rod Jones, a producer on Combs' latest album, filed a lawsuit Monday. He alleges that Combs sexually harassed and assaulted him while he lived at several of Combs' homes. The details in the lawsuit were nothing short of shocking. With video and picture evidence, Lil Rod blew Diddy's double lifestyle wide open. And while details about sexual assault were bad enough, it's Diddy's parties, known as freak-offs, that have caught everyone's attention. The nature of the parties, as well as the fact that Diddy secretly recorded them, caught everyone off guard. So what was happening at these parties? They include multiple lawsuits involving allegations of sex workers, hidden cameras, and compromising recordings of celebrities and politicians. According to Lil Rod, there was heavy use of drugs at these parties, and at one time, the ex-Diddy employee claims that Diddy brought male prostitutes into his Miami house, where he was drugged and possibly raped. Lil Rod also claims to have footage of Diddy providing laced alcohol alcoholic beverages to minors and sex workers at his homes in California, New York, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and Florida. According to Lil Rod, Diddy has been secretly recording explicit sex tapes of various celebrities and politicians using hidden cameras strategically placed throughout his lavish homes during his notorious freak-off parties. While living and traveling with Mr. Combs, Mr. Jones discovered that Mr. Combs has hidden cameras in every room of his homes, the lawsuit read. Mr. Jones believes that Mr. Combs has recordings of defendants Lucy Charles Grange, Ethiopia Haptamarium, as well as other celebrities, music label executives, politicians, and athletes. Lil Rod alleges these individuals were recorded without their knowledge or consent, making the situation even more disturbing. The violation of privacy and the potential damage to reputations cannot be overstated. The mere existence of these compromising tapes raises questions about the lengths Diddy was willing to go to obtain such intimate footage. These individuals were recorded without their knowledge and consent, and as is the case with the homosexual sex sex tape of Stevie J that Mr. Combs provided to Mr. Jones, Mr. Combs possesses compromising footage of every person that has attended his freak-off parties and his house parties. Upon information and belief due to this treasure trove of evidence he has in his possession, Mr. Combs believes that he is above the law and is untouchable, the lawsuit read. Lil Rod even went ahead to allege that Diddy had shown him one such recording involving none other than Stevie J. He alleges that Diddy showed him a recording of the American DJ, record producer, and television personality engaging in anal intercourse course with the man. According to Lil Rod, Diddy used this recording as a way to manipulate and solicit him, suggesting that such behavior was common in the music industry. Diddy knew Lil Rod looked up to and idolized Stevie J and used the recording as a way to solicit him. So illegal drugs, minors, sexual assault, and hidden cameras. These are what Diddy built his power on. And as it turns out, Stevie J was not the only one caught on camera. Celebrities, politicians, and even athletes have their own place in Diddy's dirty files. Is his freak out parties. In attendance were celebrities, politicians, athletes. This then begs the question, was Iron Mike among those who took part in the freak-offs? Did he know what Diddy was up to? Well, interestingly, the legendary boxer has admitted to attending Diddy's parties. Yeah, I knew him for a long time. When I, when I first became champ, I knew him. I remember him. He used to have crates when he used to have my after parties and stuff. 
That's when they were throwing parties. However, the former world heavyweight boxing champion surprised everyone with his description of Diddy from back in the day. According to Mike Tyson, Diddy was an awesome guy. Is there anything you uh, have opinions on Diddy? Have you had any experiences with Diddy? Awesome guy. Yeah. Um, I knew him before he was um, Diddy. Well, that was in the 90s. However, internet detectives dug up a clip of Iron Mike in an interview with Diddy. At some point during the interview, Mike Tyson moves Diddy's hand, which was uncomfortably close to him, and even changed his seating posture to get away from him. Did Mike Tyson know something fishy about the music mogul, or are fans just reaching? Well, while we may not know which athletes are in Diddy's tapes, there are celebrities who have been subtly described, and their identities are now an open secret. As it turns out, the lawsuit also mentions Meek Mill as having engaged in sexual acts with Diddy. Mill is not directly mentioned in the lawsuit. However, one excerpt from it reads, Mr. Combs informed Mr. Jones that he had engaged in sexual intercourse with rapper, R&B singer, and Stevie J. In the footnotes, the description for Rapper 5 reads, he is a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj, while the description for the R&B singer 6 says, he performed at the Super Bowl and had a successful Vegas residency. Well, Meek Mill is from Philly, and he dated fellow rapper Nicki Minaj from 2014 to 2016. An insider at E! News attributed the split to constant fighting. They were fighting on and off for a little while about a few topics that upset Nicki. They had a bigger fight and then called it quits, the source said. Meek Mill was forced to respond to the allegations that he and Diddy were gay behind the scenes. But that was not before hip-hop commentator DJ Academics hopped on the internet to demand that Meek Mill address the damning rumors. Yo Meek, we were playing around with the Michael Rubin shit. You be tweeting about everything on planet Earth. If you don't get on a Twitter rant saying you're about to get Lil Rod killed, you're about to shoot up his block, blow his mama's house up. This was saying you and Diddy was fornicating, Academics said on a live stream. Meek took to Twitter to address the situation. I'm from Philly. I don't do coke or freaky ass molly. Nobody won't even offer me coke because I'm that heavy. No man or what would ever approach me about gay activity and the whole place don't get flipped. Woke up seeing this on every blog like they know I'm coming. LOL. But what about the R&B singer mentioned in the lawsuit? Well, the lawsuit says that the singer in question performed at the Super Bowl and had a successful Las Vegas residency. Everyone's eyes turned to Usher, who actually fit the description. In 2024, performed at the Super Bowl, and in 2022, he had a successful Las Vegas residency title. Over the years, there have been a lot of questions asked about Diddy's conduct towards Usher. And there have been many suspicious moments caught on camera between the two, raising questions about the nature of their relationship. And what's disturbing is that rumors of a sexual relationship between the two can be traced to when Usher was just a boy. It all began with a young and talented Usher, whose musical abilities caught the attention of music executive L.A. Reid. Little did he know that this would be the start of an extraordinary journey that would lead him to none other than the legendary Puff Daddy. At just 14 years old, Usher embarked on an adventure that would forever change his life. Usher's undeniable talent impressed L.A. Reid, who saw in him the potential to become an R&B superstar. Recognizing this, Reid arranged for Usher to fly to New York and live with Puff Diddy, the iconic figure behind Bad Boy Records. This unique opportunity, known as Puffy Flavor Camp, was designed to give Usher a first-hand experience of what it truly meant to make it big in the music industry. Moved to New York City. And I lived with Sean Puffy Combs for a year. That's the crazy thing. Now, that yeah. was L.A. Reid's idea, right? We're sending New you York over to City. something called Puffy Flavor Camp. There you go. To learn <laughs> Flavor some... Flavor Camp! As Usher arrived in New York, he was greeted by the larger-than-life presence of Diddy himself. But amidst the glitz and glamour, Usher also witnessed the darker side of fame. According to the star, he witnessed things that his young mind couldn't comprehend. What I did say is that there were very curious things taking place. Uh-huh. And I didn't necessarily understand. Did Diddy try to make a move on young Usher? Well, that question question would be answered years later during one of Diddy's parties where he accidentally said the quiet part out loud. That's my brother right here from day one. We used to wake up and, I mean, damn, pause. Well, there are many other celebrities mentioned in the Lil Rod lawsuit and may soon be outed for participating in Diddy's freak-offs. Mike Tyson's favorable assessment of Diddy has for sure raised eyebrows, especially given his own past, which kind of has similarities to Diddy. Is he just covering up for the music mogul? The Mike Tyson-Diddy comparison. Why do you think she said you raped her? Because she's a sick, money-hungry, she's really a bad person. Just like Diddy, Mike Tyson has been accused of multiple times. In the summer of 1991, a scandal erupted that would forever alter the legacy of one of boxing's most formidable figures. Mike Tyson, a titan in the ring, found himself in a battle far from the cheering crowds and the bright lights of the arena. The accusation? The rape of Desiree Washington, a young pageant contestant, which led to a conviction that shocked the world in 1992. This conviction not only sent ripples through the legal system, but also dealt a crushing blow to Tyson's career 
and shifted public perception of the heavyweight champion. You hurt me and I was big enough to stand up to you. Desiree Washington, a bright-eyed college student with aspirations that reached far beyond her title as Miss Black Rhode Island, stepped into the limelight in the summer of 1991. Little did she know her path would soon intersect with Mike Tyson, the former heavyweight champion of the world at the Miss Black America pageant in Indianapolis. Their encounter, a blend of celebrity allure and youthful ambition, would spiral into a narrative that gripped the nation. Washington met Tyson during a rehearsal, an introduction facilitated by the pageant's star-studded guest list. The following evening, Tyson invited Washington to his room at the opulent Canterbury Hotel, an invitation she accepted, unaware of the events that would unfold. The next 24 hours would change their lives irrevocably. Washington emerged from the hotel, not with tales of a celebrity soiree, but with a harrowing account that led her straight to the emergency room at Methodist Hospital. She reported a rape, naming Tyson as the assailant. The media, hungry for a story that juxtaposed the glitter of fame against the grimness of assault, descended upon the case with fervor. Headlines blared across the nation, painting Tyson, once revered in the boxing world, as a figure now mired in controversy. The initial media reaction was a cacophony of disbelief, speculation, and a voracious appetite for every salacious detail. As the story unfurled, the public watched with bated breath, their perceptions of the boxing legend and the young pageant queen hanging in the balance. The stage was set for a trial that would captivate audiences and challenge the very notions of consent, justice, and celebrity privilege. Where the former heavyweight champion Mike Tyson lost the biggest fight of his life to a 108-pound opponent. The jury's decision arrived like a thunderclap, resounding through the courtroom and beyond. Mike Tyson, once the youngest heavyweight champion, was found guilty of <laughs> The verdict sent shockwaves through the public, dividing opinion and igniting debates on celebrity, justice, and race. Tyson's conviction was a pivotal moment, challenging the invincibility of fame and raising questions about the treatment of sexual assault survivors. Ten years in prison, with four years suspended. The sentence was a compromise of sorts, reflecting the gravity of the crime, yet acknowledging Tyson's potential for rehabilitation. Tyson's stoic demeanor cracked as the reality of his fate sank in. The man who had once dominated the boxing world was now confined to a cell. For Tyson, the conviction was a catastrophic blow to his career. Endorsements vanished, and his boxing license was in jeopardy. The man who had been a source of fear in the ring now faced his own fears behind bars. But it doesn't end there. In 2023, he was yet again implicated in another rape scandal. A New York woman is accusing boxer Mike Tyson of her back in 1990s. She filed a lawsuit this month in Albany seeking $5 million in damages. The woman claims that Tyson attacked her in a limo in the early 90s after she met him at a nightclub. In 2023, a woman choosing to remain anonymous stepped forward with a lawsuit that sent ripples through the world of sports and beyond. Filed in Albany County Court on January 5th, the lawsuit leveraged the recently passed New York Adult Survivors Act. This act, which came into effect in May 2022, opens a one-year window, allowing adults who were victims of sexual assault to seek justice, regardless of when the abuse occurred. The woman recounted meeting Tyson outside a dance club named September. She describes how an invitation to a party led to her being alone with Tyson in his limousine, where the alleged assault took place. The woman's words in the affidavit are stark, alleging that Tyson started to touch me and attempted to kiss her. Despite her protests and pleas for him to stop, she claims that Tyson violently raped her. Diddy has also been on the receiving end of numerous similar accusations stemming from the 90s. Sean Diddy Combs has been hit with another lawsuit just as he settles his first. This time, Joy Dickerson Neal claims she was a victim of, of sexual assault by the musician in 1991. A spokesperson for Combs says the accusations are not credible and purely a money grab. In the first lawsuit filed against Sean Diddy Combs, we have the harrowing account of Joy Dickerson Neal, a woman who has come forward with shocking allegations against the music mogul. According to the lawsuit, Dickerson Neal Neal accuses Diddy of assault and battery, intentional infliction of emotional distress, sex trafficking, gender-motivated violence, and the making and dissemination of revenge. These claims paint a disturbing picture of the events that unfolded in the early 1990s. At the time, Dickerson Neal was a psychology student at Syracuse University, and she had previously worked alongside Diddy in a music video. Little did she know that her connection to the famous artist would lead to a traumatic experience. According to her account, she agreed to go on a date with Diddy, unaware of the horrors that awaited her. During their encounter, Dickerson Neal alleges that Diddy drugged her and transported her to another location. It was there that he secretly filmed himself sexually assaulting her without her consent or knowledge. The violation she experienced is unimaginable, and the aftermath of this incident had a profound impact on her mental health. The gravity of the situation is intensified by the claim that Diddy recorded the assault, turning it into a form of revenge. Reluctantly, Dickerson Neal agreed to go on a date with Diddy, despite her reservations. Little did she know that this decision would change 
change her life forever. During the date, she left her drink unattended, and it is alleged that Diddy took advantage of this opportunity to drug her. Days later, the full extent of the horror unfolded when a male friend revealed to Dickerson Neal that he had viewed a sex tape involving her and Diddy, along with other men. The documents allege that her friend callously informed her that everyone had seen the tape, leaving her utterly horrified and traumatized. This revelation shattered any sense of security and privacy she had left. The consequences of this assault were devastating for Dickerson Neal. The trauma she experienced led to her dropping out of college, forever altering the trajectory of her life. The emotional toll on Dickerson Neal cannot be overstated. The lawsuit describes her overwhelming feelings of humiliation, embarrassment, violation, and constant apprehension about who else may have seen the video. In addition to Joy Dickerson Neal's allegations, another woman, identified as Jane Doe, has come forward with a deeply disturbing account of her encounter with Sean Diddy Combs. Jane Doe's lawsuit paints a horrifying picture of coercion and sexual assault, implicating not only Diddy, but also singer Aaron Hall. According to the lawsuit, Jane Doe and a friend attended an MCA event where Diddy and Aaron Hall extended an invitation to an after party. Little did they know that this invitation would lead to a nightmarish ordeal that would forever scar their lives. Upon arriving at Aaron Hall's apartment, Jane Doe alleges that Diddy coerced her into engaging in sexual acts against her will. However, the situation took a sinister turn when Aaron Hall forcefully entered the room, pinning her down and subjecting her to the level of violence and disregard for consent displayed in these allegations is deeply disturbing, but the horror doesn't end there. In another room, Jane Doe claims that both Diddy and Aaron Hall forced her friend to engage in sexual acts as well. The trauma inflicted upon these women is unimaginable, leaving them with lifelong scars and emotional pain. To make matters even more chilling, the lawsuit details an incident that occurred two days after the alleged assault. Fearing that his then-girlfriend would discover the truth, Diddy reportedly went to the home where Jane Doe and her friend were staying. There, he allegedly choked Jane Doe until she lost consciousness. The level of violence and intimidation described in these allegations is deeply disturbing and raises serious questions about the character of the accused. As the legal battle unfolds, the public is left to grapple with the shocking allegations against Diddy and Aaron Hall. The latest lawsuit against Diddy alleges that the music mogul, along with former Bad Boy Entertainment president Harve Pierre, engaged in a heinous act of gang rape against another unnamed Jane Doe when she was just a 17-year-old high school student. In it, the Jane Doe claims she was sexually assaulted in 2000 three by Combs and two other men. At that time, the woman was in the 11th grade and just 17 years old. The details of this lawsuit are truly shocking. According to court documents obtained by media outlets, the plaintiff, referred to as Jane Doe, claims that the incident occurred in 2003. She alleges that Harve Pierre approached her at a lounge in Michigan claiming to be best friends with Diddy. To prove their relationship, Pierre called Diddy, and the woman alleges that both Pierre and Diddy convinced her to take a private jet to Daddy's House Recording Studio, which is owned and operated by Diddy himself. The lawsuit includes photos that Jane Doe claims were taken at the studio that night, including one where she is seen sitting on Diddy's lap. These images serve as evidence of her presence at the studio and raise questions about the nature of her relationship with Diddy and Pierre. According to the lawsuit, once at the studio, Diddy, Pierre, and an unidentified third assailant plied Jane Doe with drugs and alcohol. They then allegedly subjected her to a vicious and horrifying gang. The suit describes the incident as part of a sex trafficking scheme, with the defendants exploiting a vulnerable high school teenager and transporting her by private jet to New York City, where the assault took place. All these allegations are pretty serious and could have Diddy locked up for good. However, seeing that he is a billionaire, Diddy may choose to settle out of court. If this happens, we may never know the extent of Diddy's disturbing actions. If you enjoyed this video, click on the boxes playing on your screen to watch similar content.